Hello friends, once again welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator and part 3 of the Boeing 727-200 full flight tutorial video. In the last episode we have completed our pre-flight, entered our waypoints to the INS, aligned the INS, discussed our departure and completed the rest of the preparations to prepare the aircraft for pushback and engine start. In this episode we are gonna discuss the pushback and engine start and taxi preparations and we might want to use one of the checklists that I found on uh, flightsim.to for this episode to make sure we have completed everything that we needed to complete for pushback engine start taxi and then the next episode we'll discuss takeoff flying the departure that we discussed how to fly it and set the aircraft for climb and that's gonna be takeoff and climb in the next episode. Again, thanks for joining me today and I'll meet you in the cockpit very shortly. So again, welcome to the flight deck and we have a couple more things to be finished before we can request pushback. First thing, we finished the loading. We could have done this in the previous episode but we are going to set our trim and EPR Takeoff EPR is showing 2.0, that's for the left and right engines and the center engine or the um, third engine is a little bit higher than that because due to that S duct uh, configuration. Trim is 575, you can set this through here or you can go and set it manually if you want to. This is taking too much time, so I'm gonna use the clipboard to set the EPR and trim. The EPR is set as you see here, 2.0, 2.0, 2.0. I'm not sure if this is accurate. You can take a look at the charts for your current uh, elevation, temperature, and uh, and 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 the required uh, EPR. But I'm gonna do a trick here. I'm gonna set the third EPR to 1.84. That's our climb thrust. Just as a reminder. That is now done. We'll do a final check. And we can now complete the before start checklist and request pushback doors doors are closed ground interconnect is closed pegs should be off now because we are gonna start requesting pushback fuel shutoff valves are on cross feed valves are closed for wing tanks hydraulics are set we can turn on the engine hydraulic pumps now or after start it doesn't matter I don't think it makes any difference in this aircraft APU is running, parking brake should be set and we'll turn on the anti-collusion light or beacon light that's on now and transponder you can turn it on right now or later ground crew and vehicles are cleared, passenger signs are on and Finally, the duct pressure is about 25 psi, so we are ready to request pushback. Let's go ahead and open the starter guards and call GSX for pushback and engine start. So I'm not sure what's gonna happen. I had some issues where the engines could be could not be started. I'm guessing that's a bug with one of the tests or something. But we'll see how this one plays out. If they don't start, we can always use Control E to start the engines. That's not ideal Hello, or realistic simulation, but it is what it is. Last thing, while they are while they are preparing, we can also set our speed bugs: one two eight, one two eight, one thirty. So what I'm gonna do is move this a little bit. Set this to one two eight, roughly there. Second one to 
Bypass and then the third one to 190, which is our indicator to start retracting the flaps completely. And then I'll use the heading bug to set it to 250 knots as a reminder to accelerate after takeoff. That is pretty much it. Make a note of the clock. There is no chronometer or anything like that, so we'll leave it that. And we are pretty much ready. According to our parking position, we need to push the tail to the right and nose to the left, so that's going to be our pushback direction. And everything else seems to be fine for engine start, so we're good. Packs are off. Yeah. I hope we will not have any issues this time. We'll see. And I'm guessing it's something, it has something to do with the tug lifting the aircraft, perhaps creating a bug, but we'll see if they will start this time. I had this so many times, like I was able to start the engines one out of six tries. So nose left, tail right. Release parking brakes. Parking brake Commencing released. push. All engines clear. Start at nice. will. Let's remove the clipboard. We will wait until we clear the parking stand and at a safe distance to start the engines. And during pushback only engine 3 is started as far as I read. So we'll put engine 3 to ground, monitor N1 and as you see it's not rotating. That bug is still there. I'm not sure what's wrong with this but it's not doing it. Let's try one thing. Let's change it. I'm not sure if it's the galley power affecting this, so let's turn it off. Everything else is in the correct position, and let's try this one more time to see if the engine can be started. No. So as you see, the starter does not engage, and we don't get any rotation. And to rotation, and if you go and check, you see that start valve cannot open. So I'm not sure what's causing this. I have looked at everything, I have pressed double check that I, everything is done, but it is not doing it. So let's complete the quick pushback. Set parking brakes. Yep, parking brakes are set. Waiting your confirmation for good engine start. No engine start, so you can disconnect. I'm gonna tell them to stop the pushback Unlocking and gear. complete the procedure. And we're gonna try to start the engines once more. If they don't, we'll see if Control E will help us to start the engines. If you know what's causing this, if you have an idea, please let me know. But I am unable to find the root cause for this failure. Let's cycle the packs once more. Cycle the bleed air. Those are the things that comes to my mind, but we have bleed air pressure, packs are off, APU is running, and the engines should start, but they can't. Let's try one more time. And this doesn't change which engine I'm trying to start, they don't start. So, Tow truck disconnected. for example, if Bypass I pin removed. do one, same thing happens. Left is clear, right is clear. So, we'll do Control E. I'm assuming this is a bug and magically all three engines are starting now so unfortunate but it is what it is wait for the engines to start I wish it wasn't like this but nothing has changed We'll see. I don't know. Was it... Was it the essential power? I don't know if I needed to change it to generator 3 prior to starting the engines. I don't know. And look at that bleed there. It goes to zero and then starts climbing back up. So. Not sure about that either, but this looks like it is bugged as well. Even if you are starting the engines, the bleed air does not go to zero as far as I know. 
or at least the needle doesn't jump around like that. Okay, looks like all three engines are running, so let's close the guards. Turn the window heats on. Turn the pitot heats on. Transponder is already on. We'll go start here. Why the boost pumps are showing low pressure is out of my imagination. Hmm. That's also interesting. Something is not kicking in. Why do I have my boost pumps lights all on showing low pressure? They shouldn't. And same for the hydraulic pump. Hmm. This is interesting and concerning, if you ask me. Packs are on, everything is on. We have electrical... Oh, yeah. Electrical power. That's why. Alright, let's just start with closing the Gen 3 and then we will select Gen 2 is synced so we can close the circuit Gen 1 we need to sync the generator that's synced now and this should take care of all the pumps there we go okay that's the electrical power but then how in the world the boost pumps can pump fuel to start the engines if no electrical power is provided so I guess I have to report a bug because that's not realistic at all while we are here we'll do the engine vibration test they should climb up to between 3.5 or to 4.5 and then go back to zero once released and they can't Well, maybe they weren't at zero. Anyway, so that part is done. Nothing to do here, everything looks okay. Uh, we'll turn off the engine 2 bleed and APU bleed because we are gonna use the bleed air from the wing engines or pod engines 1 and 3. This is fine, we will turn this to flight prior to takeoff. Not yet. And we can turn off the APU, looks like, because we don't need it anymore, so... Shutting down the APU. Let's take a look at the after-start checklist. Start levers are in idle, beacon is on, engine enter ice is not required. Electrical power, boost pumps, hydraulic pressure are checked, and lights are out. One thing I haven't done is turn the galley power back on. Not that it matters in a Friday, but it is something to remember. And we are pretty much done with this part of the video and preparations. Everything is done except setting our flaps to our takeoff flaps position. And I was watching a video uh, from A330 driver and he was recommending that Flaps will be moved to 2 position, wait for the light to turn to green before extending them more. So, not that this aircraft cares about that kind of operation, but in real life he was explaining this is done that way. To first extend the slats and then the flaps. So, we'll wait for that light to turn to green. That's green now and we can go ahead and select flap, flaps 50. 15 is selected. Waiting for the flap extension to complete. We are done with pushback, so we'll close the anti skid, complete and inbound and outbound anti skid test. And finally, stall warning test can be completed now. All is good, everything is set and we are ready for taxi. Let's turn on the taxi lights and the runway turn off lights and that concludes this episode. It's a little bit short but this is pushback or we can complete the taxi and then do the takeoff in the next episode. That's what I thought we would be doing. Okay, let's do that.
I'm not gonna end this video here. It's oh by the way, don't forget to put your INS to nav after the alignment is complete so the red light extinguishes, then it is ready to uh, take command of the autopilot and navigate using the GPS waypoints you programmed in there. So that is done. Parking brake is off. We'll give her high breakaway power. Just like that. And then idle the thrust. And she's gonna start taxiing at idle speed and accelerating as we go. The center line changes based on how you set up your wheel. For mine, it's the base of the rear windshield wiper. So if I keep it there, that's. Uh, means my nose wheel is on the center line all right taxi checklist let's do that config warning horn that's this advance the throttle tree if no horn sounds that means your config is fine and as you see we are accelerating like crazy so i'm gonna apply some brakes for this turn and brakes are checked taxi lights are on runway turn off lights are on window heats are on Fuel heating, engineer will take care of it, oil cooler, we can do that after this turn, and air conditioning is as required, so we'll take this taxiway all the way to the end, and that's gonna take us to our departure runway 26. Again, let's try to maintain the center line. Apply some brakes, we don't want to speed. If you want to see your ground speed, move the selector to ground speed and we are doing 13 knots on the ground. That's how you can tell your ground speed. There's a fire truck or passenger bus coming towards us, playing chicken with us, I guess. But we will ignore that he is there because GSX still hasn't figured out how the ground vehicles are going to interact with the aircraft if it's GSX if it's not my apologies then Microsoft hasn't figured that out yet all right oil coolers we will move keep them on the ground after takeoff they will go to normal so they are in the correct position we will hold short at the runway and finish the episode there and in the next episode, we will do the before takeoff checklist, talk about the departure one more time, kind of do a departure briefing, if you will, and complete the before takeoff checklist. And that will be the takeoff climb and cruise video. And I think the last two episodes will be descent preparation and descent, arrival, approach, and landing. And that will conclude the video series for this aircraft so this runway has two entries if you'd like to use the full runway that's the next left turn but i think we should be able to take off with the available runway from this entry position so we will hold short at runway two three somewhere here I guess that was the whole short point or I don't know sometimes these ground markings are not uh, accurate so we will set the parking brake here and finish the episode thanks for being here with me today I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, video and if you stumbled upon this video but not a channel subscriber Please consider subscribing and turning on the notifications to get notified for my future videos. Again, once more, thanks for being here with me today and I'll be seeing you in the next video.